Today's episode is brought to you by Wireless Zone, located in Dunst Corners, Westley, Rhode Island. Wireless Zone in Westley is an authorized Verizon Realtor. There, you can find all the latest and newest phones, including the iPhone 13. And if you're in the business for a new phone, you can get up to $440 off your new phone with a trade-in of an old phone. And if you have a broken phone, they have a repair zone. There, they can help repair your cracked screen. You need a new battery. They have you covered there in the repair zone. Check out Wireless Zone in Westley, Rhode Island, located next to the Dunkin' Donuts and Dunst Corners. All right, on today's show, I welcome on a very special guest and a reoccurring guest. He's Tyler Kolick. He is now the guard for Marquette men's basketball team. Tyler, how are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah, of course. Anytime, man. This is this is awesome. I mean, uh, big changes since last time we spoke. Uh, you ended up transferring to uh, Marquette. What was the decision to go to play at Marquette, and what was the decision to transfer? Yeah, I mean, to transfer, obviously, last time um... – my coach at George Mason had gotten fired. Um, so, you know, I was just looking for kind of a similar fit um, at, you know, quote unquote, higher level. I mean, the A-10 is a great league. Um, but, you know, the Big East is definitely a step up from that. Um, but, you know, I was just looking for, you know, the right fit for me as a person and, you know, student and, and also a basketball player. You know, I wanted to, you know, kind of replicate the same role, if not, you know, increase my role that, that I had last year. And, you know, I felt like I had, I had a good chance here and uh, to do that. And coming into game week, I mean, it's looking like I'm, I'm going to be able to do the things I want to do. And, you know, that's through hard work and, and dedication. Definitely, That's awesome. That, that's great for you guys. And like, great for you to be able to join such a, you know, a great program and a, like a prestige program, especially. Uh, and then you're also, you know, you're playing for a guy that's, pretty legendary i mean like we know what he did at vcu he had a, he had a pretty good run at texas uh what's it like to work with uh you know have coach soccer smart yeah i mean he's definitely different um than what i was ex- expecting i mean you never know with a guy like that you know high profile you know one of the top five coaches in college basketball um you never know what you're gonna get um so i mean i i, I kind of came in with an open mind and you know it's definitely he just He's just like any other regular guy. He just loves basketball. I mean, he's got he's got great energy every time we see him. Not not just in the gym. I mean, we we got kind of this, this meal room where where they we do like training table, which is one uh, after practice, before practice, they bring in some food for us. You know, we're all sitting in there. He'll just come in high energy. You know, yelling not yelling at you, but just like yelling, just you know, with positive energy, trying to get you going, getting ready for practice, everything like that. You know. So, I mean, it's been definitely a good change. You know, last year it was COVID. So, I mean, not a lot of people, we weren't, weren't really allowed to, you know, get together like that or be close and, like, really even talk like that and have good conversations. Um, so, it's been, it's been good this year. That's awesome. That's so cool that, like, you would expect someone that does all, like, constantly, you know, doing a lot of work, scouting and everything, like, and he just brings in this high energy and it's uh, it's different. I, I Like I said, I wouldn't expect, I don't know, wouldn't expect that from him, but that that's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect it. Either. Like, you never know with these guys, but I mean, because you, you see him, like you said, legendary coach, you know, uh, he's accomplished so much. Um, so, I mean, you don't you don't know what they're going to be like, but I mean, they're just like any other regular person that just loves basketball. That's awesome. Did you ever like talk to him? Did you know he was from Rhode Island or was born in Rhode Island? Who was that? Shot, shot Coach Smart. He was born in Rhode Island? Yeah, I think it said something like he's from like North Kingston. I was like Wikipedia page or something like that. Really? Yeah, I think so. I have to double check that at the end. Of, but yeah, I have to double like double check my facts on that one. But someone had said that he was. Uh, yeah, I had I read that. So I was gonna. I don't know if he had at, told brought that up to you or if he was just there for like a short time. No, I knew I knew he grew up in um, in Wisconsin. Like his mom still lives in Wisconsin, and everything like that. So I'm not sure. I never heard that before. Yeah, someone said that he was born like you know, I think he was born in. Um, Rhode Island. I thought I started was born in Rhode Island or something like that. I someone had said I that. Ask him about that. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll, have to, I'll have to find that out before we get off so you can ask him. I don't want <laughs> come off <laughs> give me the wrong information. <laughs> um, so what what's like been also like what's been the biggest thing you learned from him, like you know, and like and playing at a higher level too with other guys too. Yeah, I mean it's just attention to detail. I mean 
coming into college, you know, style of play, pace of play, everything like that, it, it's hard for freshmen to pick up on because you got such a – you got the summer to pick up on it, and then you got a little bit, maybe four weeks of real practice where you're going hard every day instead of the, you know, eight hours you get in the summer and the, the beginning of the fall. So, I mean, you really got to figure it out quick, and, and especially coming into a new program, um, you know, just, just learning what they want they want you to do and, you know, them learning your game as well because they, they can only do so much, you know, watching film on you, and they, they really know what you're about when they see you in person, when they really see you play and practice day after day and what you bring on a, on a daily basis. So, I mean, with, with him, um, for me, it's just being consistent, you know, being that everyday guy um, that he wants me to be. Because, you know, we got a lot of young guys. We got seven, seven freshmen on our team, um, six or seven. And we only got three upperclassmen and uh, three or four sophomores. Um, and so we got, we got a really young team, probably one of the youngest teams in the country. Um, so he just preaches leadership to me every day. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm trying to, I'm trying to really bring upon a leadership role um, with all these young guys and even with the older guys, you know, if, if, cause they're new to him as well. Um, so, you know, just trying to be, be the, the middle ground between the players and the coaches, you know, just, just bring everything into harmony. Yeah. I mean, and what's that with too, like you, you come into a new program and, you know, you have to take that leadership role. Like what's, what's the biggest things that you had to like reflect on, on yourself to be that leader. Yeah. The first thing is really just establishing yourself first. Like you can't really take on a leadership role if, if nobody respects you. I mean, you got to be respected and liked and, you know, people have to, you have to show people with your game, not only just, you know, with, with your attitude and effort and, you know, your work ethic, you got to show all that stuff. Um, they got, you can't really, and I, this was a good quote um, from Chris Paul. He actually showed us like, you can't, and uh, you can't ask somebody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. So, I mean, if I'm asking somebody to, to get in the gym extra, you know, to, to play me one-on-one -on -one or work on extra stuff, you know, I can't ask some of that if I'm not doing it myself. So, you know, just establishing myself doing those things to then being, you know, not on a higher level because leadership isn't, you're on a different level. It's more so just, you know, having more of a voice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You have to be some sort of a voice. And I do like that quote um, to have, like, you know, you got to, if you're going to ask someone to do something, you got to have to do it yourself as well, too, which is, I think, a great, great quote and a great thing of leadership as well, too. Yeah, kind of like leading by example. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then what's like, too, like the adjustment as well with being, getting to know new teammates in such a short span of time? Like, did you meet them when you got to campus or how did that work out? Yeah, we, we started, we got here uh the end of may i think may 23rd or 4th um and i mean just practicing with the same guys every single day uh since then right four or five months yeah. um you know and, and you build relationships real fast on, on a team i mean because you're with the guys you're, you're waking up at 7 a.m you're going through the struggles with them you know you can you can really um vent to each other if something's going wrong that's really how you get close like just going through the struggles as a team and so, I mean, I feel like it's been it's been relatively easy to, you know, mesh and, and become good friends in such a short period of time. But, you know, you never really know how you're going to play with somebody until you really play with them. And we actually got our first game coming up on, on Thursday, first exhibition game um, against Bowie State. So, you know, that'll be a good good test to, to see how how much our relationships are going to impact our play on the court and play with each other. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's 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 really cool. I mean, it's great to see you too as well. You you know, you're playing in the Big East. What's 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 that feeling like knowing that you're playing in one of the legendary conferences, a conference where there's a lot of battles, teams really fight with each other and you, know, you got UConn now joining back in the Big East too. So what's what's it like to be a part of the Big East? I mean, I've always wanted to play at the highest level of basketball possible. Um coming out of high school for me the highest level possible was the a10 that was the highest level that was recruiting me um so i so i did that i went there um and you know i, ha I had good success but that that just goes to show my work ethic and you know i had since i had success i felt like i owed it to myself to then try again try again to have more success at a higher level and you know we'll see this year how things go i mean I, i've definitely put in the work i feel like i'm definitely ready for it but you know, growing, like you said, in a historic conference, I grew up watching Providence College basketball, watching the Big East basketball. And, 
just dreamed about playing playing in it and and now i'm living that dream so it's been pretty cool that's that's awesome and now how is it going to feel for you to like be able to be a part of the big east tournament be able to step on you know the court at Madison square garden for that tournament and like you know just be part of those those legends of those guys that were able to do that yeah last year um for the 18th tournament it was supposed to be at barclay bark the barclay center in new york as well but obviously COVID had other plans and uh, they, they didn't really have the financial stuff and everything figured out. So they played it at, at University of Richmond and at VCU. Um, so that would have been the experience. But I mean, Madison Square Garden is one of the one of the best arenas in the world. I mean, that's one of the most storied arenas. You, everybody hears about the garden, you know. So, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good time. We actually play in St. John's. They play in, in Madison Square Garden as well. Um, like at least half their games and then they play their other half on their court, uh, like arena on campus, but that'll be cool playing them there. And then um, obviously the tournament, I mean, just being in, in an NBA arena is, is going to be surreal. Yeah. I've, I've heard stories about guys who've like played there and like, they've, they told me that it's like, that like the crowd is like dark, like you can't see the crowd. And like, it's like, you guys are like the center stage. So it's just like all lighting on you guys. It's, they said it's like it's an experience, like none other. Yeah, that's kind of like how NBA arenas are. Like we play in the Pfizer Forum, the Bucks Arena. Um, yeah, and it, it's it's huge. Like so, so the court and and the lights kind of blind you from the crowd. That that's why it's like that's why you can't really see anything. And it's just you just see the court. That's 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 pretty cool. That's got to be a cool experience. And what's it like too? Like mentioning the crowds. What's it like to be to actually have some crowds in the in the stands? Yeah. So the so. We had uh, Marquette Madness probably a few weeks ago, and yeah. that was probably the biggest crowd that I've been in front of um, since I've been in college. I mean, last year our biggest crowd was probably at the A-10 tournament when we played down at Richmond. Uh, I think 1,500 people maybe were allowed in, in the stands, um, and there was probably 2,500 at the Marquette Madness. We weren't even playing each other. We were just out there like – doing some shooting drills, shooting competitions, dunk contests, everything like that. Um, but I mean, even seeing that amount of fans, but for our home games, they say we get upwards of 17,000 people uh, in a sold out arena. So that'd be pretty cool. That'd be surreal. First time we run on the court for the home game, just to see that crowd. Can't wait. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. Do you think you get any butterflies or do you think you'll be <laughs> all right? I mean, last year with no crowd, I, I would get butterflies. I mean, a game's a game. I, I get, you know, you yeah. get nervous just because you get you get maybe um, maybe 130, 140 college games in, in your in your lifetime. So every game is an opportunity and, you know, something that you, it's, you're really lucky to do. So you can't take them for granted. And obviously with that comes, you know, the nervousness, the butterflies. So, you know, as time goes, I'm sure I'm sure the first couple of games I definitely will with the big crowd. But I'll start figuring it out. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's got to be cool, too, because being at Marquette, you know, is such a also like another legendary good basketball school. You guys like Dwayne Wade and uh, Doc Rivers. Like, what's it like for you just to put on that gold and blue, um, you know, jersey? Yeah, so we actually last year, I mean, I didn't really get to experience um, any fans or anything like that, like really diehard fans. But like we've had. um We've had like dinners with the donors, um, other activities for the fans. Like we had a, a block party um, for the fans to come meet us. Um, we just had a Halloween hoops, uh, which is like we scrimmaged each other this past weekend where fans could come watch that um, in the in our little arena where the girls play. Um, but I mean, you know, we're just walking around like today. We were we were uh, shopping for the we adopted a class. Um, here in Milwaukee and we were shopping for them uh, for winter clothes and other other toys and gifts and stuff like that. And, you know, all these all these workers at, at the superstore wanted to take pictures with us and, you know, wanted to meet us, talk to us. So, you know, just being a part of Marquette, like they don't know my name. They don't know who I am. They don't know. They just know that I'm on the Marquette basketball team. And so they they want they want to get a picture. They want to talk to you. So, I mean, just the program itself really puts you on on, you know, the next stage the bigger stage that everybody wants to see that's that's awesome that's that's gonna be such a cool feeling to you know you know people obviously gonna look up to you guys and you know it's it's like being in part of a big basketball town like i mean you know market basketball is 
a big thing. I'm sure like they don't, you guys don't have a football program, right? I, I don't think yeah, so. No, it's just basketball. Everybody, everybody focuses on that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure. And you guys got, I mean, it's just looking at the schedule. You guys got a lot of TV games too. So a lot of great things for you, uh, you know, coming down the line, being a part of Marquette. And I'm, I'm excited for you, especially a guy from Rhode Island to really uh, show out for us, for us Rhode Islanders. <laughs> For sure. I appreciate that. Of course. Um, and then, you know, what's your off season like, you know, what kind of hard work do you put in to get ready for this level of basketball? Yeah. So in the summer, um, like I said, we got here end of May. Um, and at that point we had, you have, uh, eight hours total, um, for the week where the coaches can work with you. So normally they break it down four hours in the weight room, four hours, um, four hours on the court, um, during the week. So that's just with all the coaches, with everything like that. Obviously, you can do stuff on your own, um, in, either in the weight room or on the court. You have the graduate assistants. They're there whenever you want. we got about 12 managers that, that come and rebound whenever you want. So, so in the summer, I mean, we were waking up uh, 7, 8 o'clock, lifting, um, coming back later, practicing, uh, and then – Usually, usually in between that or, or after that, or sometimes both guys, guys are getting in with the graduate assistants, you know, and the coaches give them kind of, kind of workout plans to go through. And so you're kind of really getting the, the full in the summer. You're not really, you're not taking, I was, I was taking one class in the summer. Um, mm. So it was online. So it's not, you're not really taking class. You're kind of living that pro lifestyle where you're just working out, working on your game um, isolated from everybody, honestly, because, you know, you're in the dorm, nobody else is here. So it's just really time for you to focus up and, and really lock in. Um, and then once it gets to the, um, to the preseason, probably about five weeks ago, they start, they open it up to 20 hours a week. Um, and with one, I think it's like one mandatory off week, off day a week. Um, and so that's when really, really practice starts when you start putting in your offense, when it's more team oriented stuff rather than, you know, individual workouts and working, working on your own game. But that's just in like uh, in the practice setting. Like obviously guys are still working with the graduate assistants, with the managers, rebounding for them, working on their individual games to put that into team, you know, team play. Um, but no, I mean, college life, college athlete life is definitely, definitely a grind. There's no, no day like today we had an off day. Um, but, you know, I was in there at nine o'clock. I lifted, I got treatment, um, which is just like, prehab stuff basically like just taking care of your body preventative stuff um did that for about an hour and then worked out after that and then we had to do uh i had class and then we had to go like i said earlier shopping for the for those uh kids that we the class that we adopted um so i mean there is really no off days like today is supposed to be an off day and i had a full schedule i'm just getting back to my room now since eight o'clock in the morning so i mean <laughs> I mean, it, but it's fun though. I mean, you gotta, you gotta love it, but you know, I, I do. And a lot of, a lot of college athletes do if you, cause you know, you take the, so much time, you put so much time in to get into this point. So. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it, that's crazy. It sounds like a full-time job and then some on top yeah. of it. <laughs> or like we got a game on a uh, game on Thursday. It's just an exhibition game, but we got class in the morning and then we got shoot around at two. Um, two o'clock normally two o'clock to three o'clock games at seven so you're going to class and then you're going maybe getting shots up before we shoot around and then we go over to the arena and we got to stay at the arena from two to two till game time and then obviously the game so two to maybe nine thirty ten o'clock at night so i mean it's really you're leaving your room you're going to class and you're not getting back to your room maybe 8 a.m to 10 p.m so i mean it's really it's really a full schedule that's that's crazy. That's that's wild. So what's it like too for like homework and classes? How does that work? Do they like they give you guys like a study hall, right? Correct? Yeah, there's study hall. There's so they got they do a great job here with uh with tutors and everything like that. Actually, our, our practice facility is on like underground kind of and then uh middle grounds where like the coaches' offices are, like um all all like food that we need, everything like that. And then above that is actually the academic uh help people who the tutors, you know, the uh, academic advisors, everything like that to really help us with our schoolwork and everything. You, you got to find time for that too. I mean, they do a good job. Like I took one class in the summer 
so I only have to be in in four classes right now. Um, so they kind of lighten the workload while still staying on course because because of those summer classes. Yeah, that's that's good. At least you have the summer courses to help kind of help that out. And then uh, what's what's the biggest thing? What's the adjustment to Wisconsin life? What's what's the biggest adjustment from coming from the East Coast, the uh, you know Central Central life? A lot of people would say the weather. I mean, it ha- it's, it hasn't gotten too bad yet. It's about 40 degrees at the start of November. I mean, I mean, in, in Rhode Island, it doesn't, doesn't get down to 40 till probably about end of November, um, yeah. early December, but yeah, I mean, biggest adjustment so far is just being, being far away from my family. I mean, last year I was in Virginia, um, probably only about an hour and a half plane ride, five, six hour car ride, um, away. And that, that wasn't too bad. I mean, I've been away since my junior year, you know, going to boarding school and everything like that, but you know, now being two and a half hours flight, 16 hour plane, uh, 16 hour drive, you know, don't get to see them as much. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely the biggest adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is a big adjustment. I mean, uh, being slowly starting to move your way further and further away from home. And now, now you got like a 16 hour drive and then a two and a half hour plane ride, but you know, thank, thank God for planes though, because yeah. two and a half hours, not too bad. So. Yeah, <laughs> you could, bad. yeah. Could be worse. Could be on the West coast. It could be yeah, it's six hours. Maybe California next. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then what's, uh, you know, how big is, how big is football out in Wisconsin? What's everyone, do you see everyone wearing cheese hats everywhere out there? Or oh yeah. So some, some of our managers are, are really big Packers fans. So on game days, we have practice or we're in there, some guys working out, they'll come in, in in a full Packers outfit. They'll come in in the, in the jersey, they'll have shorts, they'll have the Packers socks and the Packers shoes. They'll have everything on, oh my just God. full head to toe. I mean, I haven't seen many cheese heads because we're probably about an hour and a half, an hour uh, to two hours away from Green Bay. It's about uh, that, that far away north. Um, so I haven't seen that many cheese heads, but definitely a lot of jerseys and everything like that. People are passionate about Packers out here. Oh, I can imagine. As as you have you experienced like any of the like cheese curds or anything out there in like Wisconsin? So yeah, so <laughs> they pretty much have cheese curds at every restaurant you go to. Uh, there's a pretty pretty famous like fast food spot called Culver's. Um, I haven't heard. Like, yeah, it's like a mid Midwest. I have never I never heard of it before I came here either. It's kind of like they got. It's almost like a higher end like higher end uh fast food not like a mcdonald's burger king more like a more like a chick-fil-a um so they got like all burgers they got shakes kind of like a like a diner almost but fast food um but yeah I, i've had their cheese curds you know i've had cheese curds at some other restaurant too it's basically just mozzarella sticks in a ball and <laughs> they don't like like it's just ball form but they don't have like a marinara sauce or anything with it they just eat them straight up i actually had a i went to the the bucks opening night game had them there too but you know i'm, I'm getting used to the culture i guess yeah yeah oh yeah definitely and what was it like going to that bucks game seeing being open night for ring ring night and everything like that yeah that was that was surreal i mean pat connie actually he played for my au coach um and my au team um so it's pretty cool to see him him get that get his ring and you know go out there and the the best part about that is walking into the arena um seeing all the fans and because we're we're going to be playing in there with the you know we get the same amount of fans as they do you know the same atmosphere so you know just walking down to to my seat just looking all around and everything like that that's the best part because I'm, I'm just thinking wow we're going to be in it we're going to be playing in here this is going to be us in, in a little while that's wild that's that that's such a crazy thought that like you you know you're about to experience that like very very soon yeah and we're uh we actually so the first uh, month of our season, we're going to be playing on the Bucks court too, because our court um, something happened to it, and they normally like switch out the court, switch out all the graphics, uh, uh, the um, the padding on the backboards, um, everything like that. But we're we're just going full Bucks NBA three point line, everything. That's awesome. That's so cool. That's going to be such a great experience. Yeah, it will. They'll be playing on the NBA court. Oh man, that's awesome. Well, hope uh, well, hopefully we can launch one from the NBA line. We'll, I'll cut that just in case. <laughs> uh, but hey, Tyler, this has been awesome. Great. Thank you so much for joining on your day off. Sounds like you've had a packed schedule and I feel like I added on to it, but I appreciate you being on the show. It really means a lot. Uh, yeah, to us. Fun coming on. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's great talking to you, man. Uh, do you have any questions, comments or anything before we sign off? No, man. I just appreciate you having me on. Looking forward to come back in the middle of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We'll have to get an update and uh, yeah, it's so excited for you and keep doing what you're doing and uh, you know, good luck this year with Marquette and we'll definitely get you back on. Might have to get you back on before the PC game or something. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All, right. All right. Take it easy, Tyler. Thanks.